everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the R3 podcast, Rescue, Rebuild, Restore. This is a podcast for Operation Restored Warrior. We're helping people all over the world to get free and stay free and live the fullness of life that Jesus promised all of us, but that so few of us uh, get to see. And I'm here with my good friend, Jordan. Jordan Fulton is a uh, the director for all of our drop zone programs. He trains all of our facilitators. He creates content for the ministry. So he is at the heart of the messaging and the programs for Operation Restored Warrior. So welcome to the podcast, Jordan. Thank you, Shane. It's uh, it's good to be here. Yeah, it's all it's always fun to be here. So we, we were talking right before we we uh, hit the go button, um, and then what we were talking as we often do about what does it mean to be led by the spirit. How do we make sure we're not missing things? How can we tune in to the different things he wants to reveal to us? And in particular, in in our lives where we think we've got a plan, we've got our structures, we, we've got our timetables, how can we be open to the interruptions of the Holy Spirit and and have those unlock things in our lives? And, and Jordan, you had a great story that you were using as an example. Why don't you share that now? Yeah, so that's a, that's a great question. Um, I was always curious about how do we, growing up in the church, you know, hearing about living in the spirit or walking in the spirit, like, how do you do that? It's not like this <laughs> mystical thing. Do I have to get lots of degrees to figure it out? Like, I hear people talk about it like it was pretty easy. Um, and then, like, how do I, how do I do it? But I've certainly grown a lot over the time I've been walking with Jesus, almost 35 plus years now. Um but yeah, so one story I think helps helps to illustrate it just by a spiritual awareness that you need to walk in. Um, just the other day, and I recently transplanted to Florida with my family. Um, I've got five kiddos, and we're down here enjoying the Sunshine State. And we're really close to water. We've got the ocean on one side, and then we've got a river right on the other side. And so in the evening, there's this walkway right by the river, and so we're walking on this path. And uh, the other day, or a couple of weeks ago, I was actually walking with my wife, and um, we saw, actually, they walked up, there were this family, they had a couple of kids, and they were pointing, and there was actually an alligator in the water, uh, which was like maybe four feet long. It's the first time that my wife had seen one. Uh, I had seen one prior, but it's so cool to like be in Florida and see an alligator. That feels like part of the experience. So they pointed it out to us that it was there. Then, you know, you see it, and it was like sneaking up on this flock of ducks and stuff, and it was cool. So we were all excited about it. We came back and told my family, and um, they, of course, we wanted to go see it, but by the time they came out, it was gone. So then just two days ago, uh, we were out walking, my wife and I, and actually my, my second daughter, Gabby, came out with us. And I've been looking for this alligator ever since I had that experience. And we went out there and lo and behold, there was a still water, still river. And I saw its head and little nose popped up. I was like, hey, look, there, there's an alligator. And she was like, what? So we got out our cameras and we took, took a photo of it and stuff. And and I think sometimes, believe it or not, walking in the spirit can be a little bit like that. Um, somebody has to show you what's out there first, and then you can like focus on, and then you can see it. And then as you begin to walk on the path, then you'll have your own experiences where you can see it for yourself, uh, but not just for yourself. Then you're kind of bringing other people into it. Hey, can you see this thing that's, that's right here? Oh, yeah, I do see it. Awesome. And I think a lot of that comes through learning and I mean, I've, I've there's there's certain uh, ministry leaders that I followed for for decades, and um, hear their stories about how they, you know, prophesy, have prayers for healing, uh, moving in the supernatural, dealing with the demonic stuff like that. Where I'm like, man, I want to hear these stories because I want to see what's out there. I'm okay. not physically seeing it just yet, but I'm I'm exposing myself to it in a way where okay, I know this is possible. So if I do encounter this, it's not like hmm, where did that come from? Like I've I've heard of that before, but now I'm seeing it with my own. And now you know to look for it. There's a level of now I know active engagement. Uh, I can kind of relate to that. I'm I'm nowhere near as far in my in my journey of, of following the promptings of the Holy Spirit and 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 really walking in what I know intellectually now is possible. But uh, very similar to your crocodile story, I the first time that I met and spent time with our, our our director, Paul Lavelle, our founder of Operational Restored Warrior, I was really amazed by the, the sorts of things that you guys do because I'd only seen that 
in the book of Acts. Like the only time that I'd seen people uh, have levels of supernatural knowledge and share things that at the time I would have cringed to say were prophecy because like, what even is prophecy? Um, healing? Deliverance? Like, does that even still happen? Um, so I was totally thrown by the whole thing. And I was talking to Paul and uh, he, he was talking about hearing from Jesus. And I was like, okay, so what, what does it mean hearing from Jesus? Because I can read the Bible and I've been told to mistrust anything else. And he's like, oh, you you hear from Jesus all the time. So well, actually, I happen to be with me all the time. And I'm quite certain that I don't hear from Jesus. And he's like, no, actually you do. And as he began to describe what that looked like, and as I went on a journey looking for it, now with that knowledge, I, I realized he was right, that I receive I receive insight from Jesus. A lot of my best ideas are actually from Jesus. Um, promptings to do things are from Jesus. And the more you lean into that, the more really the, the more that widens my awareness and I'm able to pursue it more fully. So that's what that's what that story reminded me of. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely true. And why shouldn't you hear from Jesus? Like you're in a relationship with him. It says that our spirit is literally made one with his spirit. Yeah. So now his thoughts, we have the mind of Christ corporately. So now our thoughts can hold, hold his thoughts. So we can feel his heart, how he moves us emotionally towards things. Or we can have an inner sense of just knowing what we're supposed to do in a given situation. So, yeah, I mean, I just feel like there's nothing more natural for us than to just, and that's walking in the spirit. Just, yeah. Uh, just being in relationship with Jesus, maybe that's another way to say walking in the spirit. It's just being in a relationship. Yeah. And what kind of what kind of relationship can you have with anybody, really, when you when you can't hear from them? For, as opposed <laughs> as opposed to what Jesus said is that that I'm the good shepherd and my sheep hear my voice and they know me and they follow me. And I think yeah, I think that's the only real definition of relationship that you can have. Because it has to be, there has to be dialogue. There has to be mutual exchange. Because if I'm just talking at you the whole time and I never give you a chance to respond, and then I get up and I leave, that like that wasn't a conversation. That was a monologue, and there's no relationship. And that's kind of how we do with prayer. Sometimes is we just pray for our requests. We we say our yeah. part. We don't pause to listen to receive back from him, and then we just we roll out. When you know, I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that we're supposed to like be still be patient, kind of wait on him. Yeah. Be too, not be too jumpy. Yeah. One of, one of uh, my favorite teachers, I know you, you have followed him uh, as well. Chris Valentin. The, the first time I met Chris Valentin, it was pretty early in that G uh, in then on that same journey uh, that, that Paul started me on. And so I wasn't really sure what I was hearing from Jesus or whether I was hearing from Jesus. And I, I had an opportunity to interview him for a show I was doing. And uh, he gave me this analogy, it's like, what if you're, you fall in love with somebody and you want to marry them, but in the course of your relationship, um, they, don't actually, they don't actually talk to you. They actually just hand you a book. Um, and, and everything you need to know about them is in that book. And instead of uh, telling you how they feel about you, they, they just kind of point to some key areas in the book where they referred to that before. Um, and rather than understanding what kind of future the two of you would want to have together, um, they guide you and prompt you to look up some relevant verses. I mean, if the book can be great, but you can't call that a relationship. Yeah. yeah. And I think most people, that's their relationship. It's with the Bible and it's great. Read the Bible, digest it. Yeah. It's living and active, all that stuff. It's awesome. But it's supposed to point us to the author have the relationship is with him. This is just him like in, in print form. I think I heard Bill Johnson say one time, Bible's just Jesus in print form. Like you can read it, but you can also know it. And he's the only one that you can read the Bible and have the author show up. Yeah, that's wild. You're reading. Well, those are some good overarching foundational principles. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about what it looks like to be open to that in the course of life. Uh, like I said at the beginning, uh, for me, like life is super structured. Uh, I hit the ground running. Uh, I've got I've got kids. I've got work. We've got extracurriculars. I mean, it's 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 very very structured. And I'd like to talk about finding the ways to be open and to hear, and kind of as our guiding metaphor for that. 
the process of the drop zone that uh, that now you run almost every month in with with guys who are desperately in need of healing and deliverance is has become over what 15 more years a highly structured program i mean there are there are i know it well at this point there are things that you do every single time the same way every every time Except there's this variable in there, and that's the Holy Spirit. I'd love to hear, without you you revealing too much about the process, which is a really a strict process, how does Holy Spirit show up? How does he how does he in the in the rigidness, uh, seeming rigidness of something that's set, uh, how does he just show up and own it? I'd love to hear about that. So I'll answer your first question. Um, I think just in everyday life, uh, for me, uh, I've learned some things over over time. And one, I I know when I was going to Bible college back then, I used to I used to feel like when I would pray and say Amen, I felt like that shipped it, and then I would go on with my day. So I realized I didn't I didn't want to just now I do my part. I talk even if I'm listening listening prayer, but I still like Amen. And now I'm done, and now I can go and do my day. And so for a while, for years, I actually stopped saying Amen, not because I wasn't saying so be it, wow. but like I just didn't want. The conversation to end so and i feel like i and i don't really know how but i just try and keep my heart open so if at any point throughout the day like i'm i'm just ready to receive not just on a sunday morning while i'm at church not just when i'm at my quiet time either in the morning or happens to be in the evening but i'm driving my car when i'm taking my kids to their sports and when they're doing their stuff when i'm in the grocery store when it's late at night or i don't sleep or whatever it is I'm I'm always looking to to connect or staying open. So that I feel like is my uh, my set heart attitude of just anytime I want to communicate, Lord, like I'm I'm listening. But I'm and and he, he does most most of the time he doesn't. It kind of goes in ebbs and flows, and the way that he communicates to me varies a little bit. That's that's maybe another podcast, but <laughs> um, yeah. So that that's so in that. So then transitioning to a drop zone. Well, how does that work when you have structure? Uh, I think the Lord functions in both. He functions in structure and I don't want to say seemingly without. I mean, the Holy Spirit is characterized as wind. No one knows where it's going. No one knows where it comes from. But like you you want to you want to feel it wherever wherever it is you want to get on. Yeah. Um, it makes me think of this verse, and I'm, I pulled it up here. I was thinking about a Proverbs 16, 9, where it says, Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. But it's actually, hold on. Well, that's your own. This one, uh, 16, nine, we make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. So it's good to have plans, but then in that, the Lord directs that. Almost like if you're making a recipe, you can get the same ingredients every time, but if you're just, if you know any, any good cook, they don't measure anything. They they just grab a pinch. They, ah, that's close enough. They just dump <laughs> it in there. And that's kind of what it's like is the recipe is still the same, but it's it's a little bit different. We may have a little bit more of this thing at this drop zone, a little less of this thing, or this may be emphasized at this one and not at this one. So we've got our plans, but then the Lord kind of pushes us where he wants us to be in that. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, to go back to the 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 daily example. Like I've talked to you a lot. We've known each other for a good while. I've never heard that analogy of just never saying amen. Um, I mean, I, I'm still stuck there. I just think about my relationship with my wife. Um, some, you know, over the, over the course of uh, a good day, we might have a really meaningful conversation, and we'll probably have forty or fifty snippets of conversation over the noise and through the chaos. And at no point do I go. Okay, I got it. We're out. Over and out. <laughs> like it's it, the door remains open, and I and I'm always looking to her, and there's always the invitation for her to reach out to me. That's wild, man. That's deep. So the, in the drop zone process, again, I don't I don't want to push you to reveal too much about the process, but I'd love it if you if you can think of a few examples of how you're going through uh, a well organized. Uh, well thought out process and have had the Holy Spirit interrupt you, redirect you 
in in a meaningful or dramatic way and what those results have been? Oh, uh, they're always good. I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> um, I think one question that I've learned to ask a lot is, Jesus, what would you have me do here? If um, so, we could be say one of the things that we'll go after is generational sin and breaking those off. And so there's a little bit of a repetitious prayer. It's powerful, but it's you know going through specific things you're breaking off. But sometimes somebody may hit like a word, and they start to like respond emotionally, and you realize like, okay, there's something here. I'm not sure what. Um, I had this one guy. He was doing that, and um, and the word under under sexual morality, one of the things was was molestation. And he never shared in a story that that was what he experienced, but when he saw the word on the paper and he had marked it off, all of a sudden he like he was having a reaction to that. And so I can follow the script and go, okay, what's the next one? And move on, or I could pause and be like, okay, something's here. I'm not sure what. Jesus, what would you have me do? Wow. And I actually, we... we we took him to a later step that we usually do um, in the prayer, and we kind of did it right then and there. In the middle of that, Jesus brought some healing to this man and took the pain and shame and all that stuff that he was dealing with right then and there. We sort of wrapped that up, and like, and then we move forward, boom, 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 and then we kept, we just went down and kept kept going through the same. So it was like I could have stick with the script and just kind of kept moving, and I would have missed that moment. I never would have known that would have come up because he didn't share that with us, but it, it did come up in that moment. So, it, you know, it's, it's the whole box of chocolate steel. You never know what you're going to get going into a healing prayer. I mean, most of the time it follows how it should go, but sometimes not. Sometimes going into the prayer as we're filling out the booklets that we follow with just notes and different things that we're doing, as we're praying that through, we don't have usually a lot of time. Um, I'll, I'll get a sense on the front end of like I've had you tell me once, you know, this is gonna, this is not gonna be a normal prayer time. Like, okay, um, so like, what is it? Guess <laughs> like, what are you know, you to let me know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for letting me know. So, what does that mean? It was just like, follow me. Like, okay. So, I mean, I went in there with the booklet. I went in there with everything, my plan laid out. Um, and then we got there, and I think they ended up. This happened actually a couple of different times. Not, not many times, but it's happened. This particular one, there's probably some stuff I can't uh, share just for um, privacy's sake, but um, we had an experience in the Lord together that, like, I've never, I never experienced before um, with that person. Like, Holy Spirit took us someplace that um, that was that was pretty awesome. And I'm glad he prepped me on the front end, like this isn't going to go on no prayers. Like, okay, so I'm kind of back by that river looking for the alligator. Like, okay, this is going to be different. I'm not sure exactly what to expect, but I'm looking for something that's that's different. And we're able to follow him. Uh, that was good. Yeah, I made, I made a joke like, oh, good that he let you know. But and now hearing what you've had to say, it's like, oh yeah, he needed to let you know. He realized that you needed to know, not all the details, but you needed to know you needed to be looking for the alligator because we're we're going somewhere else today. Just be ready, my my son. Just be ready. I mean that that's that's actually super beautiful. It's it's really nice and comforting to know that he's right there with you in it. There's one actually that comes to mind too. Um, normally we'll pray for physical healing at the very end of the prayer. We kind of go through all the emotional, mental, and all that stuff. My prayer for physical healing at the end. Uh, this guy had had a bunch of injuries from his time in the service and was currently scheduled for surgery on his shoulder. And, um, But he had so much hatred towards God. I knew he wasn't going to be able to receive the beginning portion of the prayer. I didn't know what to do. So in the prep of the book, I was just like, Lord, what, what do you want me to do here? How how can we break through to this guy? Like, Because uh, I can tell, like, bam, it's just like closed. It's not happening. And uh, I felt like he said, pray for healing first. And I was just like, okay, then you better, you better show up to heal it. But I'll certainly pray. Um, and that that's what happened. You know, he came in and he actually told me at the front end, like, hey, I don't want to waste your time. Like, this isn't going to work. You know, and I don't, I don't really, he is at no faith at all. And I was like, I was like, let me just try. 
like you can borrow my face like let's just let's just try they sat down and <laughs> there's people that want to be healed and there's people that like kind of don't want to be healed and then yeah. one of those don't really want to be healed and you start to have the faith um anyway and so i just prayed for healing as if he was like eagerly waiting to receive it prayed for healing on his shoulder and he started moving it around and i was like yeah i like, do something you couldn't do before and he's he's like oh that's crazy like they're still paying it. I like thank you, thank you, Jesus, for thank you, Jesus, for showing up and healing him. And, and there was just some other stuff, and that was what he needed to break open his heart to feel like. Yeah, so he had hate towards the father because he had lost his father to cancer when he was young, mm-hmm. and his church had prayed for healing for his dad, and and it didn't happen. He didn't get healed, and so there was this blame that you took my father from me. I, oh, I hate you for taking my father. And that, that wasn't the case, but that's the lie that he believed. So feeling the love of the father, feeling that he would heal his body, physical body. And there was TBI stuff and other things, you know, he was dealing with um, that Jesus met him in that place and healed. That opened up his heart. And then it was super easy to go through the normal stuff, how we normally do it. I mean, there was like a puddle of tears on the floor <laughs> afterwards. Like he just totally got rocked. Um, so wow. uh, we did it. We did it in reverse order, but that's what... That's what he did. Wow. That's, and in this, you see the truth that, like, I identify with you. Um, you're sitting there with a the guy. You, you've, you, you've, got this, you've got this process that you've seen God show up in over and over, and you really care about this guy. Um, and there's got to be some sense that you probably fight. I'm sure you fight. That like, all right, I, I need to I need to show up for this guy. I really need to do a good job for this guy. And then just the reminder of, oh, I, I, like he cares about this person infinitely more than I do. Why would he leave it up to me? <laughs> like he's gonna show up um, and do what he does. And and my my whole role really is is to be attuned to what he wants me to do. And that's that's true in a drop zone. That's true in this day that I have lived with my work and with my wife and my kids and 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 for all of life, I guess. Yeah, I mean, he really is with us in it all. And there are some scary moments and sometimes guys are really broken or they've said, you know, if this program doesn't work, I'm just going to end it. You know, it's kind of like no pressure, but I kind of hope Jesus shows up. And I've seen it enough where I'm like, okay, I can I can trust you're going to do something. I don't know how you're going to do it always, but I know you're going to do it because like you said, like you, you care for them more than I do. And so I, I just want to add his heart for them. And that's something that we pray is like, Lord, let me feel your heart for this person because you love them. What words do you want to speak to them? Um, Because he partners with us in it all. You know, as much as it's not contingent upon me, there still is an element of partnering. Otherwise, what we would do is we'd invite these six guys to a house Pray Jesus to heal them, and then they'd all go home, and they don't be healed because it's it's not about us, but He works through us. Like we have to be in that house with those guys, take them step by step through the healing process that we were taken through, to then work. So it's there is a responsibility on our part, but the heavy lifting is on His part, and He makes us look good. But I, but I know it's like just because it's Him, because I yeah I, I can't I can't do it in my own strength, and I can't change anybody's heart. I can. I mean, you know, I've struggled managing my own heart, let alone yeah, and make somebody else's heart have a change. So it's, uh, but it is amazing to watch just the uniqueness when, how Jesus connects with them, whether they need someone that, that's like strong and a little more commanding to break through some of their stuff or whether it's just so gentle because they're, they're fragile and just ready to fall apart yeah. at any moment. So it's, I feel like I've known Jesus. I've gotten to know Jesus better just by being in the room. Uh, even though he's using me, there's still times where it's like they're interacting. Jesus yeah. the person is interacting. And I'm just there observing, but still feeling and being a part of, of what's happening. So it's like, there's some situations and trauma that people experience where you're just like, there's no way that you can redeem this. Like, how can you fix this? Like, it's like, I have no idea. <laughs> and, then we, and then we invite him into it and like or you know where is Jesus there with you oh he's here what's he doing oh he's 
he's doing this and I see him fix it and speak life or change their perspective on something they didn't see before, didn't know before. And it's so beautiful how he, how he restores. I'm just like, Jesus, like you're killing me in a good way. Like you're, you're doing it. <laughs> wow. It's, right it's fun to watch. Right on. Well, I feel like this this conversation has been very organic. It's flowed from one thought to another. So I want to pause and break out some of the things that we've covered that are really practical steps that people can can attach to, can can bullet point list, can practice in their own lives um, as they look for for Jesus to interrupt their day. And and the first one is what you said is is look for the alligator. If you if you want to refresh our minds what how do you very practically like if you were to say shane i want you to look for the alligator today how do i do that um so i think through some of the like listen to other preachers or ministers or people and maybe your own pastor or the church or whatever i've always had just let's say infatuation i've always been drawn to the supernatural like i wanted i want a real expression Jesus said that greater works that we can do than he did. So like, okay, so I want to see it. That means there's something that I can do. So like, what is that? So who's who's doing? Who's doing those things? So yeah. it's part of it's like looking and listening and, and seeing what's out there. What have people done? And then, like, okay, Lord, I see you've done it through them. I see it in your word. I see you've done it through these people. Like, I'm the next in line. Like, try this guy. Like, I'm here. I'm open. And that's that can be scary. Because that may mean, hey, go talk to this person. Oh, I don't know that person. I didn't ask you if you knew that person. <laughs> go talk. To uh, hey, how, how's it going? <laughs> so on that note, um, an example, I just talking with an alumni um, who happens to be a pastor, but he was on a trip over in the Middle East and uh, in predominantly Muslim country. And they go into this shop to meet this um the guy that owns a shop, I mean, they're just doing touristy stuff, looking for trinkets or whatever. And they s- struck up a conversation with this um, this alumni, Rich. And he noticed this guy had a, like a, a tattoo marking on his forearm. And Rich said something about him, like, are you a Muslim? Or I'm assuming you're a Muslim. He said something like that. And the tattoo was actually a reference to Jesus, which sure is against the law in that country. But he said, that, that shop owner said, just an hour ago, I was praying, asking Jesus, I need to be encouraged. Would you please send somebody to me that could encourage me? And then this this guy and his team that are, that are the all believers come in and like pray for this guy, speak encouragement to him, like just, <laughs> that's, that's what Jesus does. Like they were open, they were just going to go buy trinkets. And so it was like, hey, go talk to that <laughs> shop owner. But that was an answered prayer to that shop as owner of like, Jesus yeah. sent me somebody. I need encouragement. I'm struggling. Well, yeah. So sometimes when he calls you to do something like that, that, that's the result. You don't know what the other side is. Right. Wow. All right. So that's, that is uh, learning to look for the alligator. Another practical thing that you, that you dropped was, Jesus, what would you have me do? Uh, just real practically, how could you help me tomorrow? to be better at looking for the opportunities to turn to Jesus and go, Jesus, what would you have me do? Well, I mean, unless you're going through your daily activities and you know exactly what to do in every situation and handle every place. <laughs> oh, well, that, yeah, that's me. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll talk to the people that don't have a, a pro- Okay, good. <laughs> for everybody else that struggles uh, <laughs> throughout the day, uh, I mean, I, I don't know how many times throughout the day I'm, how, how am I supposed to talk with my teenage daughter? How am I supposed to confront this situation? Um, how are we, you know, how to financially, how are we going to deal with this this issue that we have? So like there's there's a lot of opportunities throughout your day that you probably don't think of. You're probably like, oh, I just all figured out. Well, we'll we need to go, well, we'll just cut back here. Well, we'll just do this thing. And we're really missing an opportunity to be like Jesus. For one, you're inviting Jesus into Jesus. What would you have me do here in my finances? You keep coming up short. Like, we can do this, we can move this around, but like, what would you have us do here? He may give you a practical solution. He may want you to give more, which seems counterintuitive. Uh, I don't know what he's going to say because it's going to be different for you and your situation, whatever's going on. 
but relationally, how to speak if there's conflict in a relationship like Jesus, what would you have me say here? I'm upset about this. Should I confront them? Should I not confront them? You may say, don't confront them just yet. You may say, yes, go ahead and give them a call. Um, so just throughout the day, it seems like you'll have many opportunities just by Jesus. Give me, give, you, give me wisdom, or what would you have me do here? Just either to listen, and it depends. Like You may hear uh, an, an internal voice, could be audible. Most of the time it's an internal voice, or it could just be, I think like you shared, a more just like a knowing what to do. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. I've got, I got these two choices, like what should I do this one, this one. Uh, Jesus, give me wisdom. What should I do? This one. Because you have a piece about it, so you just know and you yeah. move forward. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be like super big dramatic. We're in the spirit. We've got a spirit inside of us. We don't necessarily have to uh, moment by moment pray for each and every decision that we have because we can give our day to them. And then just as we go through the day, just Jesus, give me wisdom. And then if we come to a set point like, ah, here, I need your help. What would you have me do? And then do you, how we lead you. And, uh, and one last uh, practical takeaway that I, that I pulled out of your stories was uh, learning how to take a moment and say, um, Jesus, what's your heart for this person? Um, an invitation for, for Jesus to impart to you some level of his own love for a person. I mean, and that sounds, I mean, that sounds obvious really, but I, I don't, I will confess I don't walk that way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that enough. <laughs> what, yeah. To the degree to which you do it, um, what are what are some helpful ways to to help to help prompt us? And are there any ways that you can? Are there any ways other than just asking? Any ways to put ourselves in alignment with God's heart for somebody? I don't know. I don't even know what to ask here. But 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 that's that seemed like a major takeaway. One of the things that we pray for the men that are coming to our program is we ask Jesus, what is set against Billy? What is the enemy doing against Billy? And now we sit and we listen. Could be fear, could be experience abandonment, could be dealing with addiction. So we'll get we'll get phrases like that, or sometimes a, you know, like a picture of something. And so now we know how to pray for that person. Well, he's just really a jerk. He comes across. Well, he may be coming across as a jerk, but when the Holy Spirit reveals this is what he's dealing with fear and abandonment and rejection and struggling with addiction and self-hate and suicide ideation, you're like, oh, like I, I would probably be coming across like a jerk too if I was dealing with those things or all of those things. And so I think knowing where somebody is coming from really helps to change. It really helps to work his compassion in you for that person. And it gives you specific things to pray against. So even uh, somewhat practically speaking, answering your question, like just for the people in your own house, you know, if you and your wife hit a rough patch or something, or you and one of your kids sit in a rough patch, like, Jesus, what is coming against son? What is coming against my daughter? It's coming against my wife. Listen, they feel unappreciated. They feel unloved. They feel this. They feel, oh, okay. So for one, now I can pray against those things. But then also I've got maybe some action steps. Okay, well, how can I make them feel loved? And I, I kind of cheat. I do ask the Holy Spirit. Like, can I make my wife feel loved? Like, well, what can they do? It'll give me an idea. Like, okay, and then I do the idea. I don't, I don't know. If that's I know cheating. I think that's just a good idea. <laughs> it's a good idea. It feels like cheating, <laughs> wow. but it's not. Wow. And then I'll go do that thing, and then it communicates love to her, and then she's happy, and then I'm happy because I look good, you know. But Holy Spirit gave me the idea. <laughs> but why shouldn't He give me that idea? Like we're a three-stranded cord. He's right there in the middle of us. Yeah. So, so works out. So that's been a really powerful thing to do. Uh, um, it, it does. It puts you in the other person's shoes to see what they're dealing with, and it gives you a blueprint for what to pray for them. And then it, it changes your heart towards them. There's many places in Scripture where it says that Jesus was moved with compassion. Um, he felt what the people were dealing with. Ugh. They were sheep without a shepherd. Then he healed them, was typically one of the next responses. He was moved with compassion, and he healed them. He was moved with compassion, and then he talked. So like they needed something that he felt and then that, so I think he can move in us the same way. So it's just like I was, I'll add a fourth one of just being open throughout the day. There really isn't an end time to your prayer or an end time for when he can interrupt your day or speak to you or nudge you because you're, you're in it. You're in it with him. 
So just be open. Wow. <laughs> um, I'm glad that I, that I that we're recording this because I needed to have been taking notes uh, the whole time. But uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, those of you who have been watching have have gotten some helpful tips on this. I'm hoping that uh, really that this podcast goes out to, to folks like me who uh, who are beginning, who maybe know Jesus, um, but who are starting to have the curtains pulled back on what Jesus really was talking about when he said life and life in rich abundance or life in all its fullness. It's not normal life. It's it is a, a supernatural level of existence. So hopefully this has been a little bit of a peek into that. Do you have any parting thoughts before we close? Uh, just keep your eyes open. Keep looking out for that alligator. <laughs> there's more There's more out there than what you realize. And so I was just hoping that maybe I could point out a couple things that was there all along, but now you're seeing it. So yeah. Yeah, as you're talking about the people that you go to and 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 follow to learn what it looks like to have that supernatural life with Jesus. Uh, I'm thinking, well, I, I, I follow you and, and I follow uh, Paul and you guys here at ORW have taught me, you've been, the, you've been not like a, a wise third party. You're like people to lock arms with and, and really see firsthand. Now, this isn't, this isn't somebody who's got a platform saying some cool things. I mean, this is genuine, live it out day to day. So I appreciate it. And thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And and that's for all of you listening and watching. Um, I want to invite you, the viewer, to lock arms with this in a, in a super super practical way. If you have, uh, if you know somebody who's got wounds, who's really struggling, if that's you, um, I just want you to know the reality that that was not the life that Jesus meant for you to be living in day after day. Yeah, we go through this world. It can be rough. We are gonna take some hits, but Jesus is the healer and it is, is his intention for you to have healing and life and freedom. So if you go to uh, operationrestoredwarrior.org, you can, you can learn more about the programs that we offer, but I especially wanna point out the uh, online programs that are now completely free. Of course, you, you have an opportunity to pay it forward but you in the comfort of your own home at your own pace can go through the very programs that Jordan was describing that have been setting people free, changing people's lives through the power of Jesus and the Holy Spirit for 15 or so years. And that's available to you right now. It is one click away right now. So I just wanna encourage you to check it out. And until next time, I'm Shane, and this has been the R3 Podcast, and we'll catch you later.